Welcome to Tales from the Flip Side. This is our modern playbook roundtable. Let's go around and introduce everyone. Let's start to my left or right, uh, Steve. Sure, Steve from my Bargain Comics. Happy to be here. I'm ready to play. <laughs> Mighty Bell V on a Hennessy tonight, so buckle up. Drunken chat, son. <laughs> Mr. Long Short, happy to be here. Yeah, Jonathan from Hive Comics. Uh, my partner, James, will be back here in a little bit. Good to be here. How you doing? Ultra Maximus here from the uh, Wednesday Night Presser and maybe some other places. Uh, thanks for uh, joining us here for this uh, wonderful event. And I'm Aaron Yi. I'm with uh, Comic Book Future. Sure. So before we start, we want to announce our winner from two weeks ago. We have the Sula stuff with this great comic. The Toxic Avengers series had some great photo covers. Please contact Mr. Longshort on Instagram, and he'll get the second print of Generations Hawkeye out to you. All right, congrats. Uh, you hit me up. I'll send it right out this week. All right. Are you guys ready to play? Deal or flip side? <laughs> <laughs> so with this, we're going to pick between two books at this price point. Which one are you purchasing? And then this is what we have for our first two choices. We have Rick and Morty at a CGC 9.6, issue one first print, and Gargoyles number one, a 9.8, new stand edition, and Boss white cover, white pages. Uh, so Mel, what do you think? Which book are you purchasing at this price point? Well, here we have old school versus new school. With the amount of money, new money coming in from younger people, I would go Rick and Morty because those are, are people that were younger, starting to grow up, starting to have more money to spend. So as an investment wise, I would say go with the Rick and Morty. But old school me, I hate nine sixes. I would go with the nine eight. <laughs> But investment wise, definitely go with the nine six because all the younger kids are getting older and they're gonna have money. I mean, money is 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 crazy right now. <laughs> so get this nine six and hold on to it if you invest in. That's that's my opinion. Yeah, so um it's a tough one. Um I gotta be honest, I don't have a real love for either one of these properties. That said, Rick and Morty's following seems to be to be a lot bigger. If I was forced to put money behind one of these two books, I guess I'm going with with the Rick and Morty. But um, yeah, that's if you're forcing my hand here. So um, otherwise, either way, I don't think I'm actually investing in either one of these, which is not a knock on either one of these. It just you know, it's 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 not where I play. Yeah, I'd I'd have to agree with uh, with Mister Longshort there. If I did have to go with one, it'd be the nine six Rick and Morty. Um, I actually, gosh, I put Rick and Morty off for so long. I was like, I didn't even want to watch it. After I watched the show, I was like, oh, I get this. Like, <laughs> that shit's funny as hell. It's so funny and creative. But I've never, I, I've never been into gargoyles. I don't see it getting. I don't right now in the market. I can't. I can't say like, oh, I don't see it getting. Much bigger because next week that could be a thousand dollar nine point eight. Mm -hmm. Just personally, I'd go with Rick and Morty because I'd crack that shit, press that shit, or just crack it and re and send it in again. Yeah. You never know. I don't see. You see, kind of tougher right now. Wait, <laughs> well, I'm, right now. I'm, I'm going to be the the one to to venture the other side. I'm with this gargoyles all day at this price point, especially at the the eighty dollar discount. You know, seventy nine dollar discount between the two, uh, as far as that goes. All day, I'd be all all over the gargoyles newsstand, and boss cover, and it's from the later part of you know where newsstands definitely were becoming more and more you know on the lighter side of the print totals. But there's a lot of things going on here that that I see. For one, I know the census totals on Rick and Morty number one are huge. Mm -hmm. So being able to find a 9.8, if you really wanted a 9.8, shouldn't be a big deal. But I would not be buying in at a 9.6 at this rate. I would be looking for a high-grade raw copy 
and trying to roll the dice myself on a crack, you know, for, for you know, and, and I understand, you know, what he's talking about, about crack pressing and resubmitting and maybe getting the 9.8 if, uh, you know, there's something that's going to, you know, let it slide. But you're running the risk, and it's a lot to risk on cracking a nine six to try to gamble, thinking that just pressing it's going to get you a nine eight every time. It doesn't always work, even yeah. though I, I can promise you I've tried it. <laughs> it, it. You know, sometimes it does come through, but not always because sometimes there's just that that flaw is just too big for them to ever give you the grade bump. But the gargoyles, from my understanding, is also back in development for either continuing. New or new episodes. I'm not really sure, uh, but I'm excited to see the resurgence because that that was a show from my youth that I thoroughly enjoyed. Right. Uh, yeah, I think I did hear noise of of gargoyles being continuing on Disney Plus at some point in time. I'm not exactly sure of release date. And sorry, I didn't prepare quite as well for this because I don't have the CGC numbers in front of me. But with that being said, I do have a Rick and Morty raw copy that I'm getting prepared to send in and everything. I would not pay three eighty five for a nine six. Uh, that's a bit high of a price for me, you know. So since I already have one, I probably would buy the Gargoyles newsstand because I haven't tried hunting for that book. Uh, Steve, what do you think? So I, I, fortunately, I did have um, just a. I, I, since I went last, I had a chance to look up the census. So we've got 92 gargoyles, one 9.8s, and we've got 179 Rick and Morty, one 9.8s. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I, I thought there'd be more. a lot more Rick and Morty because, I mean, yeah, I remember sure. when that came out, it seemed they were all over the place, especially because Books A Million did a variant, and it seemed flooded. And it took – I feel like it took a year – or, you know, wasn't a, a, a hit right away. Uh, it was like one day Rick and Morty was plentiful, and then a couple months down the road, like, they were fire. Anyway, Gargoyles, I love to pick Gargoyles up any issue of either the Marvel series or SLG. They're always good good flips, e even in, in mid-grade condition. They're just not uh, plentiful, the, the newsstand. But... I mean, I never remember gar Gargoyles being a huge property. Obviously, Rick and Morty, you know, is a huge commercial success. And so based on the IP and the longevity of the IP, you know, I, I picked the Rick and Morty one just because I think there's just more more demand for that than, than Gargoyles. And before we move on, it appears that we have a new challenger, James. So we're playing, we're playing this game called uh, Deal or Flipside. So at this price point, which book are you picking? Um, having heard most of that discussion, I think that there's better long-term potential on Gargoyles CGC 9.8, simply because you guys all know that comic books are a nostalgia thing for a lot of collectors and a lot of people my age grew up watching and loving gargoyles so when it does come to fruition that that gargoyles comes back in any way shape or form this book's going to be one that people like me are going to be out there trying to snag and i think that price of 306 is reasonable now compared to what it could be whereas rick and morty has kind of already played played out the way it has Unless you're solid that you could resubmit that and get a 9.8 out of it, I don't think it's worth it. I think Gargoyles is where it's at. All right. Thank you. So let's move on to the last set of books. So we have Marvel Collectible Classics Spider-Man number two at a Chromium 9.8. And we have a Spider-Man number one Platinum Edition at a 9.6. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, you know me. I pick good books, right? <laughs> to compare. This is uh, let uh, let James. We'll work our way back up the list uh, the same way we did last time. I, I'm going to stew on my thoughts for a minute because this is this is a tough one. That is a tough one. Good lord. Do what's does anybody know what print run was on that Marvel collectible classics Spider-Man Two Chromium cover? I think it's three thousand, if I'm not mistaken. Which isn't too far off what the platinum is. It yeah, it's, it's not far off at all. I mean, it, 
I guess you go with the original versus the recreation, right? In this instance, man, I don't know. My my heart would be at the Spider Man one platinum. No, what book are you picking? I agree. I'm going with the original Spider Man one platinum. Even though it's a nine six, can't mess with it. Can't mess with the original, man. Got to got to go OG on this one. Yeah, you know this whole nostalgia thing. I wanted this book when I was. My, you know, my 15, 16 year old self wanted this book. It was kind of like uh, urban legend, whether it existed or not. I never saw one when I was a kid, but I heard it was out there. Loved this run by McFarlane, and God, I'd have to, I'd ha I would have to go with that one. Just, just. Uh, so, so how, how, how would you, I, don't, I remember as a kid, but I don't remember how you how does how do you get the platinum edition? Was it a giveaway or no? I they gave one per store to the retailers. Um, oh. Who, who sold these books so yeah. it, was, it was it was a giveaway it was it was really tough to to come by back gotcha, then. Gotcha. eBay, i mean personally i wouldn't buy either of them <laughs> <laughs> I, that's not my thing both of those books to me are overpriced um but if i had to choose like everybody else i'd, I'd probably go with the platinum because it's the original and it's the platinum and you see that one less than than any of those and again it's a nine six, so you can take that little chance if you want and try to try to crack it and bump it. I get I, honestly, I get sick of looking at that cover though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't play it good. It shows up in a lot of places for sure. Yeah. So just uh, trying to refresh my head on the numbers of this thing. So they're saying that the estimated print run for the platinum variant is actually around ten thousand, with seven thousand given as gifts to retailers. For making spider-man number one the most successful comic in history and these were accompanied by a letter of thanks from marvel uh the other three thousand were apparently sold off in bulk mm. later mm. all right but with that said and this is the reason why i needed a minute because from my recollection with that said i would be going for the spider-man number two chromium just on sheer numbers with a 9.8 grade on the chromium because i do also know that these chromium books are not forgiving on any defects because if if it's if it dents the cover <laughs> it's not coming out you can't press it it's unfixable so finding one that was cared for and handled well enough to hit that 9.8 grade uh, i would be on i would be on the 9.8 with that being said a raw platinum Spider-Man would not be a bad addition to the collection at any time, but a lot of them were damaged. A lot of them did have like printer defects and, and color breaking bad creases on the covers. So, but yep, I'm with the chromium. Okay. Um, so I was actually in this situation before when I was looking for both of these at a con, uh, I found both of them raw at the same booth. But I only had so much money, and I knew I was only going to spend, like, on one or the other. And I looked closely at both, and I actually went with the with the Chromium because mm. it's an embossed cover. And then I sent it straight away to CGC as soon as I got it in my hands. Uh, came back at 9.8, got super lucky. There was, like, one spine tick that was noticeable, which I was surprised it still hit a 9.8. But, you know, I'm not complaining. And uh, I think like a couple of months later, a few months later, when I saved up money again, I bought a 9.6, I mean, uh, Spider-Man 1 Platinum, but it was nowhere near this price because I think it was like last year or the year before. <laughs> there, there's a resource, I got to say this, there's a resource on the internet right now that says the Platinum has a guide value of $250. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so, yeah, but it... If I had to pick at this price point, I'm going to go with Ultra. I'm going to go with the uh, Chromium again. Steve, what do you think? Well, you know, I'm looking at the um, collectible classic Spider-Man number two. It, it's really hard to photograph well. And even uh, I'm looking at a what I think is a, a, a good photograph. So I, I think this would be more of a PC buy. I don't know that I... Uh, you know, would in, invest in in in, in these. Uh, uh, I think, like Jonathan Jonathan said, um, yeah, that just isn't you know what I, what I do. 
so from the purely aesthetic uh, perspective, the, the platinum uh, calls out to me uh, more. Uh, I think would be interesting to see. Uh, did you sell either one of those, Aaron? I have not, but when I saw these prices, I'm honestly thinking about it. <laughs> I'd be interested to see which sells faster, and I think that would that would help me decide. I feel like the Spider-Man 1 Platinum would sell faster, and the Chromium may be more of a niche, and maybe uh, there, there may be less demand. I, I, I might be totally wrong. I mean, I, it may be totally the, rever the reverse, but... Um, yeah, I, I, I'm going to say the platinum nine point six, and uh, and plus, you know, number ones are worth more than number twos, right? I mean, we all know that that's a, a good rule across the board for for speculating. Mm, is that, in most cases, number yeah, twos less less printed than number ones in most. Yeah, of them? I'm, that, that's a joke. That's a joke for any for any <laughs> reviewers. Do not follow that advice. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for playing this game. Um, I'll, I'll try to have more books for next week, but we'll yeah, see. I, I, I kind of like this. You like it? Yeah, yeah I like you. this Good job. All right, so we just wanted to put a little highlight on uh, Hive Comics. Uh, thank you for joining us for our roundtable. I guess, does the panel have any questions for Hive Comics while we have them yeah, here? I said it off. I'm going to say it again on there. I need that. <laughs> I need to have the public <laughs> truth, bro. That I got. I got I to gotta tip my hat off to you guys. That is probably one of the most shocking, amazing, disgusting, great. <laughs> so, you guys, pre be prepared for the, your website to crash because everybody <laughs> that I, I put it on my Instagram, everybody's ready, waiting. Like, 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 like how we say, drunken chat. The, the sharks is out there. The sharks is waiting in. And, and is this one limited to a thousand or five hundred copies? Five hundred. Uh, five hundred. Oh, wow. Would it be a, a trade dress and um uh, uh trade uh trade dress of virgin or also just one straight shot? Just virgins. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Be prepared. And we we prefer uh, the virgins. Yeah. Prefer so the virgins. Mean? So it's a comic <laughs> comic book show. Uh, tell us your origin story. How how how'd Hive come to be? Yeah. I I asked James to join up to do some stuff. So oh, I, I I had a little company called Anomaly Comics for about a year, and and stuff just I had partners, but one of my partners was in Canada, and one of them was in Missouri, and it was it was a hassle. It was a big hassle, and um, and then you know. I, don't, I forget what happened, but it just wasn't going very well. And we decided to call it quits. And I'm pretty sure the same day or the next day, I knew James because we'd like bought and sold comics from each other before. And I knew he was in the same town. And so I just hit him up and I was like, hey, dude, let's do this. And he was like, yeah, I'm down. I'm down. Kind of in between jobs right now. Let's yeah. do this. And Time, uh, Timing was yeah. perfect. And it just worked out and it's a lot better when you live in the same town, you know, we're like 15 sure. minutes away. Nice. Um, I bought, um, and so I bought that, a that's uh, it. copy of the, uh, the black cotton cover. I think that was an extremely powerful cover. So I bought a five pack of those. Sweet. <laughs> that's how much that oh, cover. Yeah. Like I was like, it's pretty intense. Now, what is, what is your favorite cover that you guys have done? Ooh. Mine, it, mine's a, mine's um, oh man, that's tough. That is uh, tough. But, but right now, mine's a cross between from what's come out, what we sold. Uh, Gallagher did a crossover one cover for us, uh, his own recreation of cover A, pretty much, which was like hundred times better than cover A. <laughs> and then uh, we just released today a pre-sale for a. Uh, Cult of Dracula number two by Maria Key. Mm. And I absolutely love that cover. Big goat head, big pentagram in the background, all these hands reaching up from hell and shit. You know, it was like, I, I just love that cover. The detail is insane on that cover. And we'll check that out. Yeah, all right. It's Open a good website now looking for that. <laughs> It'll be the first thing you see, I think. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, first thing on the page. I. Uh, 
I'm torn because Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I like the uh, I don't know the Stanyak Last Ronin. I think Ooh. is probably one of my favorites. Oh yeah. Um, both, both one yeah. and two are so fire. Oof. Yeah. I don't know. I if I had to pick one, it's that one. But um, if not, I think I'm I'm that crossover one too. That was kind of that was our first big big book. So my heart's in that one too. I I feel like uh, that one kind of set off Hive pretty well. So like that was our, our our coming out party as a company, I guess. So, I mean, I've got a lot of love for that cover too. So I I don't know. It's between the Stan Yak Last Ronin and, and Crossover One for sure. Nice. Actually, you guys got Gallagher too. Yo, Gallagher's gonna be probably cover artist of the year. The way the way he's going right now. Yeah. Now for that Department of Truth, was that like a, a photo? And then he just did it around. Oh, that's all art. We don't. I don't ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> Say less. <laughs> Say less. Good. Yeah, that, that guy is so good. You guys, I, I can't wait to show you guys the other four Department of Truth covers he did for us. Like yeah. all of them are so cool. He's just he's gold. He's yeah. he's an awesome guy. He's super chill. He's like, he's like, oh yeah, I'll have that done for you. Hold on a second. I'm like. Two hours later, like the shit's done. I'm like, whoa, okay, all right. That's I've been cool. over here doodling stick figures and shit, you know. <laughs> what do you think about this? What is that's that? The one one of my goals this year is trying to get him on on, on on my podcast. So I heard he's a really really good guy. So yeah. oh, just ask yeah. him, man. Yeah, just ask him. He'll jump. He'll jump on there for sure. Right. Definitely, definitely. I like uh, the nice thing with him is we were wanting to get him on something else. And this is kind of like we talked about putting him on something else. And then we decided we we're going to keep doing crossover through issue 10 anyways. But we uh, we'd sent him a list of a couple of titles. And we're like, hey, man, just pick one. Which one are you feeling? You know, and he got back to us and that was the one he picked. He's like, I, I've wanted to do Department of Truth. You know, so, I mean, that's a book that he's well versed in and it's it's one that he's been wanting to do i guess for a while so you know you can tell like like jonathan said when we when we can release more images and you guys see all the covers he did you can tell that he put passion into those like he really wanted to do them and 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 it shows they are so good nice i can't wait i cannot wait and i don't really I don't, i'm i'm known for saying i don't i don't buy store variants but if you come up with an amazing cover, you best believe I'm gonna try to be on that digital line, trying to <laughs> fight the bus to get one because I'm gonna be there. <laughs> and, and that's and that's how you know you've made it when when yeah. bots are attacking your yeah. release day. So <laughs> good luck to you guys. And and I honestly I know your cover is gonna be a hit, uh, absolutely. And I, I too am in that same category where I'm very selective about the store variants I buy. I make absolutely sure I love the art, mm -hmm. and and that's really what eventually. You know, if it pays off and oh, wow, my store variant was very desirable and it's worth more than what I paid. Yeah, obviously, that's good. That's what everybody would hope. It doesn't always happen that way. But at the same yeah. time, there's also a lot of store variants out there that are a slow burn that people don't know about. And all of a sudden they find out about later on. So it, it's nice to know that I, I'm looking at some of your your books. Some of them are sold out. And I can understand why those are sold out because <laughs> those, are, those are really good covers. So when you have an artist that does good things and they speak to you through their artwork, you definitely want to retain that artist and keep bringing them back, which is one of the things that I hear about Mr. Gallagher is he's he's pretty phenomenal to work with. And that's why he, he does multiple cover sets with a lot of his people. In fact, um, I think he actually uh, did uh, a wonderful Transformers cover set, uh, six yeah. issues about. Might have might have even, even talked to somebody about some art direction uh, indirectly through some retailers. Sweet. <laughs> so he did a. So he did. Oh, they didn't get released, but he did issues five and six of crossover for us, and five was actually um, a Madman cover. And six was actually, you'll probably like this, a Gundam cover. Mm. And they wouldn't let us, Image wouldn't let us do either of those because of the rights to those properties. So, but they'd let Madman be on the uglier covers, you know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> I know. And that, I know. that may yeah. be the reason why. They, they may have been like, oh, no, this is going to steal the thunder from our regular release. If we can't yeah. have that. Oh, it was cool. It was cool. It was. I can't. 
Nice. I, I told people my Instagram said if I can't get that department truth, I'm just gonna print it out on my printer and put it in <laughs> back and forth. <laughs> Make sure it's in a mylar so it looks real crisp. <laughs> and then put it in a top loader and, and hang it on the wall. And That's it. Good. That's what I have to do for the number two one twenty five currently. So Yeah. <laughs> and it looks like that, you I saw I was, that way too soon. Yeah, I was gonna say real quick, it looks like you've worked with uh someone that I podcast with, uh Frank Gogol. So nice. well, with no heroin. And yeah, then, um, I first worked with Frank Gogol with uh, with Dead End Kids. Nice. In fact, um, his the, his very first cover was a was a convention variant for Dead End Kids. Okay. And yeah. when when that came out, he was at the con, and I I was talking to the CEO of Source Point Press on the phone, and I, he was like, "Do you want any of our stuff?" And I was like, "What do you got?" And he showed me a picture of that, and I was like. He's like, it's limited to like 20. And I was like, well, I'll take them all. Like, <laughs> take them all now. And I think I think they had like 13 of them left. And I was like, yeah, I'll take all of those. And I want them signed and graded. And, you know, and, nice. and then we ended up doing a Ben Templesmith cover for for his first issue of Dead End Kids, which I per, I like. We did, uh, Hive did uh, No Heroin, you know, his book, No Heroin. Uh, Peach right. Momoko covers for one through three, which was right. awesome. But uh, I preferred Dead End Kids. I liked it. I liked that story better. It it captured uh, captured my imagination better than uh, No Heroin did. Uh, both both good reads. Both good reads. Good books. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, in the future, I mean, looking at Frank Google's future, um, he's got some good stuff under his under his belt that he's going to be unleashing on the the indie world i'm sure for sure yeah yep yeah i was i'm glad i don't think he remembers the first time i met him which i'm i'm happy about that <laughs> i was actually at san diego comic-con picking up those books for jonathan but i was in a hurry because cgc was closing down shop in like an hour and i'm like shit i got four books to go get signed by hughes real quick so i like i went stopped by frank's booth and i'm like Hey, I'm here to grab that stuff, and he hands it to me, and I just took off. You know, <laughs> and like, I was totally gonna chat him up and talk to him for a little bit, and I didn't even get a chance. And uh, I don't, it's never come up. I'm hoping he doesn't remember me for that, but I yeah, was kind of an ass. I was just like, man, I gotta go. You know, I'm gonna message him right now. Well, <laughs> I'm gonna message He's him too. Me. <laughs> Start blowing up his feed. What's yeah. <laughs> hey, well, you you might have to come on Comic Book Food Chain and uh, do the spicy noodle challenge. Spicy yeah, noodles challenge. I yeah, heard about we, that. Uh, yeah, we interview people while they're eating uh, spicy noodles. I'm down. Okay. And my you, my you spice know, rack is probably spicier than anything. So. Yeah. So we'll get my wife up. loves those noodles. By the way, she she found she found a place that sells them, and she's like, she came home and she showed me. She's like, this is my new favorite ramen. I'm like, why? She's like, it's spicy, and it, you know, my my wife's a redhead, so she's you know takes nuclear hot showers and has an incredibly <laughs> high pain threshold. So for her to say something is spicy, it means that shit is going to burn your face. So um, it was pretty funny watching Frank turn red when, when he was doing that with John Boy. So yeah, yeah. good times. And and I, w I, would I would definitely be interested in watching you guys participate in that spicy challenge. Oh, this is so yeah. fun. Yeah, I'll bring yes. it up in our next production meeting. So yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, Let's go ahead and move on to some uh, news. So tomorrow we have the Falcon and Winter Soldier premier premiering. I know Mr. Longshort was like super excited about this, and I wish he was still here to to discuss it with us. Yeah. So uh, what, what does the panel think about you know Falcon and Winter Soldier? Are y'all super excited about it? I'm not speculating like I did, like we did Scarlet Witch. So I'm just gonna enjoy the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. I, I know my son is too. He was uh, bummed out when uh, WandaVision was over. And when I showed him the trailer for Falcon and Winter Soldier, I'm like, oh, by the way, this starts in a few weeks. He got pretty excited. So we've been watching them, watching them together. It's our, our Friday rituals is, is watching. Uh, it was started with WandaVision. Now it's, now it's going on to this. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited. My son, unfortunately, is way too young to be watching this stuff. I have to fast forward through certain parts of Iron Man where he's blowing up stuff and killing people in order to let him watch it. But uh, I can't wait until he eventually works his way up to being able to watch this stuff with me. And that's that's going to be fun times. But I'm excited because there's a lot 
there's a lot of spec plays going on, but we need to we need to remember that Mephisto is probably not going to show up in this one either. <laughs> so don't don't get your Silver Surfer threes, you know, all wound up again trying to trying to launch them out the window. But there's there's so much good spec that's possibly going to come out of this show. But I think that uh, with everybody jumping the gun the hardcore way last time, I think they're going to be a little bit more yeah. reserved. They're going to wait until the episode happens before making those spec plays, probably. But I expect your eBay to be lit up like a Christmas tree on Christmas morning at about 4 a.m. every day, every Friday for the people who are watching it. And and just remember, if, if you got a book that sells at that hour, it's gone. <laughs> you know, because there's there's no doubts about what's going to happen. Is there's going to be people hitting up sales, uh, trying to figure out what spec plays to make at early, you know, again early hours of the morning. But Patriot, great, great thing. I, I, I want to see it. What else you got? So you know, I'm pretty excited about this too. Like, definitely looks like super action packed for it. Um, and let's go over some of the uh, the cast listings. So this actress is going to be playing uh, Jolt. And Falcon and Winter Soldier. Uh, excuse me if I mispronounce the name. Miki Ishikawa. 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 Yeah. Okay. You, you, you did good. You did just as good as anybody else would have done. So <laughs> it. Any thoughts on this uh, cast pick? Jolt. I don't even know what Jolt. <laughs> no, that's why I'm looking it up myself right now. <laughs> she's uh, she's attractive. That's my comment on that. Yeah. She's she's good looking. I can live with that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not uh, right. Jolt at all. Jolt was in. Oh God, there was. She's Thunderbolt. I mean, she's Thunderbolt. Her her first appearance is Thunderbolt's number one. So if oh, there really? is a spe- if there is a spec play on her appearing in the show, it's going to be in Thunderbolt's number one. She did not show up in Hulk four forty seven with the other Thunderbolts. So but she didn't she have her own mini. She probably did. Uh, I think it was like Jolt and somebody else. Or she was like she that. was part of the Young Allies, so that's that's part of that. She's got Young Allies, the Redeemers, and the Thunderbolts uh, are the people that she's been affiliated with. Yeah, interesting. But yeah, Thunderbolts number one, February nineteen ninety seven is your mark if that's what you're looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, we have uh, Desmond Ch- uh, Chayam. For the fixer slash techno, yeah, that's a good pick. I thought that he, was Forge. <laughs> Everybody mistakes this guy for Forge, so so Mel, I'll, I'll, that's actually a compliment. <laughs> all right, because nobody knows this character, but they will know this character, and he's going to be the one that's up first. And then there's going to be people who are going to say that Forge is a ripoff of him coming forward. So get get prepared for that. But yeah, this is a. Uh, you know, we're seeing more and more of the Thunderbolts team coming together. And uh, this is probably going to be the Thunderbolts team that takes out the Dark Avengers if they do proceed down that route. Okay. All right. And so Marvel's Falcon and Winter Soldier is uh, reportedly to introduce Battlestar to the MCU. <laughs> I don't know. None of these two. I don't either. I don't either at all. Okay, well, if you're if you're reading the current John Walker series, they were trying to prime you up for some of these things. So all these characters are in play currently in current Marvel comics, uh, but uh, they're basically everybody in the Captain America program is coming forward for this for this show, and I think it's kind of cool because we're going to see. Remember, they they tried replacing Steve Rogers. You know, they they prolonged his origin. They keep pushing back how how many years he spent in the ice. You know, depending on when his books are released, but there's there's so much uh, you know Captain America mythos that have been written over the years with other characters stepping into play. Um, this guy was Bucky at one point. What? Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it, again, it, it, there's more to Captain America than just Steve Rogers. There's there's a ton of stuff that's going to involve um, this guy right here, John Walker. And and just other people in in the soldier program. So uh, I'm excited to see you know how they explore all that, especially being in you know in the MCU where it's been so contained and so limited. I think it'll be cool. Um, I personally love all the I love all the Marvel shows. Uh, I thought WandaVision was great, but that's me with Marvel. That's all I do. I don't really know a ton about Marvel stuff. I I got into comics way late. And indie comics and um, uh, self-driven, self-promoted work is is kind of what I got into. 
so I don't know a whole lot. Like, I have no idea who Battlestar is or that last girl or whatever. <laughs> Joel. Um, <laughs> Joel. I'd, I'd seen her because I bought a collection of like 60. I learned a lot because I bought a collection of like 65 long boxes. And so I learned a lot by buying that collection, having to go through. And But I still like, I don't. I'm old. I don't have a great memory, you know. I'm like, oh well, yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I've I've got that plague, man. Where <laughs> where my my memory unfortunately doesn't fade, and I remember a bunch of stupid things. So oh, I remember <laughs> I remember stupid shit for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, idiot! Idiot savant is a great title to have, man. I tell you. <laughs> um, so what's really cool, I think, and for people who are looking for spec value, and I know that's why they come on the flip side. So I'm, I'm trying to, you know, be a little bit more, give you a little yeah. bit something to go off of here. The same book where John Walker first appears, the uh, the Captain America 323 with the, the infamous wow. Marvel anniversary background, the one has the black, you know, the black suit Spider-Man. That's also the first appearance of uh, our guy here. So... Uh, yep, shares shares a uh, a bunch of appearances, and it's, it says the the first appearance of the Bucky's uh, unnamed team. <laughs> so there's a, a bunch of other guys there too. Uh, I'm going through the Marvel wiki trying to trying to keep up the pace here. <laughs> All right. So we have a new book that we want to talk about that um, we want to put on everyone's radar: the Nice House on the Lake, which is apparently a DC Black Label book. That is going to be written by James Tiny the Fourth, and I can I, I guess I'll say it. But for this panel, we love like what James has been doing for horror books. Like I know we've talked about something that's killing the children. Last week we talked about Department of Truth. So what does everyone think about this? I'm all in. I'm all in. This was like a um, a VHS cover. I was scared to pick up as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> this 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 looks amazing. Only thing that worries me. Is a hope DC just just let it, let it, let them off the leash, let him do his thing. They don't don't try to sugarcoat shit because they, I think this is going to be a, a banger for sure. I think they have with the black label stuff. It seems like they're they're kind of just letting people do their thing. So I mean, I've got high hopes for this book. I think it'll be good. You know, he's a he's a killer writer, and and there's definitely spec behind the last few things he's mm -hmm. written. I'm just curious what the end print run on this is going to be because a lot of people are talking about it and FOC is not what FOC is in two months for this thing. Yeah. This thing was announced two days ago. Yeah. So <laughs> and it's already all over the place, you know? Right. So I mean, but it's, it's going to be a killer book. I have no doubt. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to pick it up and read it. I'm bummed so, out it far down the road. The, the good news is it's a 12 issue mini series. So your wallet will get a break after 12 issues. <laughs> so, but yeah, it says, uh, per the Hollywood reporter, the nice house in the lake follows a group of mostly 30 somethings <laughs> invited to a Sylvan Lake house by a friend named Walter. That's already bad news. Dude's yeah. named Walter. <laughs> um, so some have known him since childhood, some from college, some from a party a few months ago. He's a little odd, but after a year that everyone has had, people are ready for an escape. Uh, you know, it doesn't mention the pandemic by name, though it does feel very current. Uh, so there's a lot of good stuff that I'm reading in just the pressers that are, are being dropped on these things. So it, it looks like a fun title, but speculation wise, with it Ooh. being two months away from FOC, yeah, probably not a good flip, but will most definitely be a good read and he'll probably sell an absolute avalanche amount of copies. Yeah. I mean, you know, this could probably help like relaunch like some of the stuff that DC Black Label has gone through. You know, um, I mean, I don't, I don't hear very many people talking about DC Black Label. I mean, have, have you all? Not since the Batwang. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, right. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm, you know, I still pick up a few titles here and there, and you know, I enjoy them as reads. Like nothing like where. I'd, be specking on the books. Yeah, I, yeah I, I can honestly say I've specked on a couple of them. There's, there's been a couple of really cool appearances that have happened in a few of the Harley books. Um, Red Hood, Bruce Wayne was one of them. That I was like, oh yeah, I kind of need that in my life. So, but it's Elseworld stuff. So that's on the Batman side of things. But this is set in lo what looks like a standalone universe. Yeah, just, it just back to roots of horror. And you know what? Honestly, DC. 
if you wanted to know what your place in comic book history is right now, it's probably they need to really double down on horror books. Look at what Swamp Thing does every time they do a new Swamp Thing release. It sells great for the first few issues. And then what do they do? They do their typical comic book editorial stuff. Hey, we're going to take you, great writer and great artist, off of this book and put you over here where we need you. And we're going to give your pet project to these people who are going to hopelessly fail and have it canceled within five to ten issues. And and it and it sucks to watch this happen. Swamp Thing people, they're if you've never met a Swamp Thing collector, hang out in a comic book store and, and wait for someone <laughs> to come through asking for a first appearance of Swamp Thing or a first appearance of Hellblazer. And you can have a conversation with that person about all of the mystic stuff in DC, you know, Justice League Dark, all of that magic stuff. Zatanna is one of their biggest magical characters, you know, with a history. I mean, they really have magic and kind of like that horror side of things on lock. Like nobody thinks of magic and, and, and witches and stuff like that, even though Scarlet Witch on the Marvel side of things is, is killing it right now. But I, I really think DC needs to have like a horror, a modern horror renaissance. And I think this book might, might actually be uh, leading the way. Yeah, that's, that, that was one of my questions for before I had um I stepped away. Is I hope like Batman Superman doesn't appear in this book. That'll just make this shit so <laughs> stupid. I will <laughs> save you, kids. <laughs> <laughs> get out of the get out of the skeleton pool. I got it. I got it. All right, and uh, what is Steve, this? I guess Steve had to drop out, and so he wanted to give a little eBay tip uh, to help sellers and stuff like that. So um, I actually did this to my account today uh, as we were making these screenshots. So for any unpaid item assistant preferences, you can change this. So all you have to do is go to my eBay account, my account preferences, and you can set up for unpaid uh, assistant preferences. So you want to change this from a no uh, thanks to a yes. And then if you scroll down to the bottom, you just save your preferences. So what is this exactly? So if somebody doesn't pay to just open up a case automatically? It automatically takes care of all that stuff on the back end, my friend. Let me tell you something. This is one of the best things. And so not only that, <laughs> um, it'll open a case. It'll send all the messages. It'll do all that stuff. And in most cases, they will pay when they get this notification. It's like for the honest people out there that aren't just trying to take your book off the market so that they can have their book being the only one on market, which happens. <laughs> people are that that crooked sometimes. You know, you can actually do these unpaid item systems. It'll strike their account. So as a seller, you also have other preferences where you can, re you know, restrict people with unpaid item strikes from being able to buy from you. Yeah. So we went over that last time. So, mm -hmm. yep. so it, both extremely important tools when dealing with eBay, because if you're an eBay seller and this is your source of income, the, you, you don't need an interruptions in your income stream like that. If you need to relist the item, they need to be hit with the unpaid item strike. Let you relist the item so you can find a buyer that's going to that's going to pay for it. Yeah, because I hate chase. I don't even like chase for people that owe me money in real life, let alone digitally. Don't make me come after you like I'm Moon Knight and you Dracula and you owe me money, okay? How come everybody on the flip side don't have good internet? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We're all sharing ecosystem connection, so. <laughs> all right. I like this. I like this unpaid, unpaid item system. It's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll try to give uh, more tips. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and comment below and uh, leave us comments and then we'll try to, you know, help you out with uh, different tips and stuff like that. So uh, let's go ahead and I believe, James, you had some pickups and then I also have some pickups. So let me change the screens real quick. And then I'll flip you on. So you said you had a really cool, cool pickup before we started recording. So let's see I what you got. do. I've been hunting these forever. My first one took me, I don't know, a year and a half to pick up. I'll show you my first one real quick. So this is my first one, right? And these are the uh, Spirit Weeklies. These were newspaper inserts. Um, so this one was, what was this one? July 6, 1941. And this is typical condition-wise for these things. Like there's chipping on them. Let's see on this one. 
uh, you start seeing the, the corners start getting this like dark brown because it's, I mean, it's newspaper. It's not the paper quality stock on them is just awful. Well, I found a seller that had bought um, one of the largest spirit collections in, in the country. Um, the guy had like four complete runs of every spirit weekly uh, issue um, all the way up to the last time they did anything with spirit, which I think was not all that long ago. Um, they had Alex Ross do a bunch of covers. Um, but anyways, uh, I hit this guy up and asked him what he had and was able to find nine different issues. These are all 1940s, mind you, like 41, 42, and 43. And I'm going to break the CGC census on these because I'm not lying when I say a lot of these look like they might be 9698s. Mm. Oh, for wow. 80 year old comic books, that's insane. Yeah, the paper's um, only supposed to last like 50 years top. So, you, yeah, you are correct. These are, <laughs> these are I mean, I, I can't even begin. Without seeing these in person, you guys would never believe the kind of condition they're in. Like, they look like they were printed yesterday. So, I mean, it's just amazing. I hit the dude up. He gave me a really good deal on him, uh, way better than he probably should have. So, I hope he doesn't watch this. Uh, <laughs> and I'm not going to say who he is because he's got some more. And I'm grabbing all those too. But, um, yeah, they're phenomenal. These would be good picks. I'll tell so, all of you who he is. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't know. <laughs> but, I mean, just the cover on these, you know, they're absolutely gorgeous covers. Um, this being the 1940s and it being Will Eisner, some of them are racially inappropriate or charged type covers, um, which, like it or not, you know, some people... You know, when you talk about the other comic books, it's definitely a snapshot in time. Um, and I feel like in some ways that that sort of thing is important. Um, well, Eisner definitely was not the most culturally appropriate type person. This is one that was pretty controversial. But, yeah, I mean, there, other than one or two creases on some of these, um, most of them are pretty damn perfect. This one's actually a self that Eisner did of him drawing the spirit. Wow. Yeah, I've been anxiously awaiting these to show up for a while now. The guy's uh, a busy, busy man, so it was hard to get him to ship these out to me quick. But Nice. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked. So, yeah, my first one took a year and a half, and, and, uh, or was a year and a half ago, and I've been keeping my eye out ever since. I fell in love with my first one. Um, and when I came across these, it was, I mean, perfect honey hole for me. So it, it ends most of my searching. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy. Best pickup nice. I've had in a long time. Nice. Great stuff. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, does anyone else have any pickups? I sure. I, can. To fall off <laughs> yeah. I, I grab, I grab some today. Let me go through those real quick here. I got a, a Canto two and three second printings. Great. For, pick. for cover price. Great which pick. is nice. Uh, these are nice. Uh, you guys know that. These are... No, we, yeah. we walked in the, yeah. the, the LCS and uh, uh, our good buddy, Greg, the owner, was uh, was bought, was bagging one of these. And I was like, hey, I'll take that one and whatever else you got. So... Nice. That's issue bunch. one, right? Yeah, that's issue one. Nice. But, uh, cover B, Frizzin cover. And... You know, four bucks a piece. Like, hell yeah. Like, I'll take them all. And if you got any more, I'll take those too. Um, I got this guy today from a friend, the ENIAC first print. Nice. And then these I got in the mail yesterday, but I thought I'd show these off too. Department of Truth number two, the one in 25 and the one in 50. Uh, oh. Here, let's see. Which land the 125 go for? <laughs> uh, we'll see after I grade it. I think go. it's definitely got a nine eight shot. We'll see. But that's that's it. That's it for today. It, you know what's interesting? If you look for um issue number two, there's not a lot of issue twos on, on either. No. And that one in fifty is like it's there's like one on there right now. That's it. 
Yeah. And the one, the one in 25 is the one everybody wants. The one in 50 is the rare one. Yeah. The, the, uh, the one in 10 still is on shelves in some shops that I know of, but people, people are leaving behind those variants. I'm like, all right, <laughs> but, the, but then there was also some store exclusives for number two. Some of them are pretty wicked and I got to sh- give a shout out real quick to Juana comics for their Absolutely. version variants. Um, and that actually kind of leads me into my pickups. If uh, nobody else has any, no, no my turn now. Huh? So I, I, I hit up the wanted because, of course, there's there's some books out there that I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, but I had. Did, a, did you get up? that? Did you get that new haha cover from them? <sighs> yes. Oh, oh, whole, that was the look, dude. The, the the most nerve wracking buying experience is online. Good God! It, like, look, I, I bought from J, JTC before I, I went through the JTC uh, website crash uh, for the recent Luke release. Yeah. So, uh, but, and it's funny because as we're talking about, haha. So I, I paid for these a while ago, and I was just like, "Hold on, I'm ordering more books from you, so just hold on." So I, I've I've lucked out. I've got three. Sweet. You know, I've got I got one, two, and I, I got number three <laughs> on order, so they're going to be delivered soon. But. I'm basically got a subscription for these. From yeah, him. nice. And this is the the High Republic uh, variants that he's doing. Um, so those are pretty cool. <laughs> no, my high high number ones. I know they're gonna get tr- trucked on grades. Yeah, you know, and that's what uh, I'm seeing. Some of my friends get raked over the coals on those. So, but uh, another another Killmonger number one second print. And then uh, I was very very thankful that he had this. This is the, the retail the retail incentive for Marvel Action Captain Marvel. People are sleeping on that so hard. You know, but They're not sleeping on it, man. This book's moving, if you haven't noticed. I haven't checked what? that. How much, what is that? Uh, last time I checked, it was like $9. What, for the variant? Yeah. Oh, well. That's what is it? <laughs> I was that's a one in 50, right? That's a one in 25. Or, no, it's a one in 10. It's a one in 10. It's a, but it's a one in 10 on an IDW Marvel book. So the, the, the sales totals aren't really all that high on those. And speaking of sales totals on Marvel IDW books, uh, yeah, Retail Center for Star Wars High Republic number one. And then, uh, so this one, this one people are sleeping on too, especially if you read King and Black, uh, Black Knight. Hold on a second. Swordmaster, one in 50. Okay. So that was all from Wanda Comics. And then I got another order from another store. I'm not going to mention her name because uh, one of the books I ordered was a one in 1,000. And this this package got sent media mail. Oh, brutal. So, uh, yeah, it was he he advertised it as not mint. So I knew the, the book wasn't going to be a 9-8. But still, <laughs> I ordered I ordered three other books with it to pad the order, right? Um and it's going to give a giveaway of who it is because this is their store exclusive. But uh, I'm putting together sets of the uh, the Jim Lee variant sets, and mm. there's a couple of store variants that got to nab some of the, that old card artwork. Uh, so this is the Strife from it's Astonishing X-Men. Got two of those. And then uh, he's not drawing a lady on this one, but Mr. Nakayama definitely knocking it out the park on the MODOK uh, number two head games variant. And then uh, my 1 in 1,000, which I've got uh, all, all ready to get pressed. Uh, Phoenix Resurrection number one, mm, John Byrne, mm. one one thousand. That's right. <laughs> Mel, you got anything for us? I'm selling some books. A lot of books actually. Starting with this. Oh! I'm giving a super low price on those too. You didn't offer it to me first. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Yours is the man. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, did you guys catch what that was? I don't think I don't even think they caught what that was, Mel. So, the spider um, or the no, gem? the gem. Yeah, are, you, so, are, are, are you are you guys fans of Jem Jem Bartel? Jem <clears throat> Bartel artwork. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I did a little bit of research for a spec matrix on Drunken Chat two weeks ago. <laughs> And uh, Jem Bartel, Bartel's first artwork was actually that Gem and the Holograms number seven <laughs> subscription variant. One sold yesterday for one hundred and twenty dollars. Wrong. Gem and the Holograms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bring on the bad guys. What's up? Number two, like we just talked about. Yeah. Nice. Barbershop Co. 
Ooh. Nice. That's a great Steel Freeze cover. You yes, do. Oh, Fuego. Signed. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> and the um, Bird City comic set. Punchline? Yeah. Punchline set. Great one. Show, show that C cover. That C cover is, is insane. Yep. It's crazy. Great one did his thing on it. Mm. And you is that just... C cover? Is that Kale New? No, it's it's Greg Horn. Greg Horn. Yeah, it's all Greg Horn. Uh, yeah. Okay. You can tell because he's recycled that same design three times now. <laughs> I think it's more than that, but yeah. <laughs> it looks good every time he does it, but yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, I own, I own all of them except for that one. So. Um. And so, Mel, how can we uh, buy comics from you? Um. IG. Hey, chat. IG. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Should we <laughs> bid right now? Yeah, <laughs> like I said, by the time by the time the show is, <laughs> I will see shit to be going. Because <laughs> when I get drunk, I tend to give the love price. <laughs> right. Sometimes they give shit away for free. You better give that love price before I spend big money on a Transformers variant. I probably don't need so much. Let me know. I, I give you the love price on that, on that rose. Super All right. love price. So I have a few books. Uh, I actually went to a half price books today. Uh, I found this. Nice. Yeah, so I'm a big fan of Polaris and when I, and The Simpsons. Like, I have Simpsons tattoos. And then when I saw this, I was like, uh, yes, I need this in my life. Absolutely. And since, since did, it's you not, get that, did you get that Madonna book? The Madonna one? Yeah. First Simpsons? Uh, no. It's rock and Roll Madonna. Okay. The Simpsons appear in, in that book. Writing it down right now. Mel's dropping knowledge. Look at that. Just takes a little Hennessy, and he knows everything. Oh. <laughs> Listen, I got, a show, I, got a show, I got a show called Drunken Chat, baby. Yeah, <laughs> two, two years strong, baby. I dropped some shit. So yeah. I picked up some Star Wars books. I found issue five, uh, new stand edition. Issue four, nice. And then also issue number three. Now, were newsstands more common back yeah. then? Than yeah, at that time, yes. Yeah, so I mean, they had like duplicates of each of these, like in their lock case that that uh, they do, like anything that's above, I think, five dollars. Uh, so this was a pick from last week. Nice, nice. good grab. Mm -hmm. Yep. So yeah, I went to a different shop last week, and they like I think the number seven and what was it number ten that was on our list? They were both gone, but they had mm -hmm. everything else in between. And then I thought this was a pretty cool cover. Oh, the whole series is amazing. It's an amazing read. Yes, it is. There's a uh a, a, a black stone for the um the fuck is that shit he wearing in here? The gauntlet? It's like a, it's like a, a another infinity the, gauntlet. The, the, the death the death stone and Boom. it and he makes it incorrectly and it kills him at the end. It's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. So that 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 Thanos is dead. In that universe. Yep, in that universe. Yep. That, and that, then, that was Riri. So not all black girls with puffy hair is Riri. <laughs> I remember that, you, dude. UD days. <laughs> and then, you know, uh, I was in that crazy Texas storm. So mail got delayed and everything. Uh, I got a couple of slabs in that I've been waiting for. So I got this Something is Killing the Children number nine second print. Nice. And then, and, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, is that reused artwork from the interior, or is that a new cover? Um, I don't remember if that was interior artwork or if it's new. I'll have to reread the series because I, I just love reading it, anyways. Fuck I need to read that series too. Yeah, it's great. Uh, and then this is the big one I've been waiting for. So it's a TMNT number three. It says nine point six, but this is a double cover. So shout out to Brian Roberts for helping me out. And then we were kind of tracing the history and we think it's might have been Nico's comic originally. <laughs> and, and it has a serial like by serial number, right? I think he said he had a raw copy at one point. And then oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. Wow. We'll, we'll say it's Nico's, but the uh interior or the first cover is a nine four and the interior cover is a nine six. So I thought it was kind of they put the higher yeah, grade they, on the on the grade label. Is that is that how they do that? They do they do the interior cover because it's the one that's actually touching the book. Is the way they justify it. Okay, so, so it's always the interior cover gets the grade. 
and, oh, and you you think double covers are wild? I have a book that comes standard four covers. The Transformers uh, variant from Botcon back in two thousand and six. Uh, Spotlight bo- Spotlight Nightbeat, and this book actually has the two retail incentive covers and the the B cover underneath this black and white version of the A cover. Oh man, that's crazy! And, and it's it's super duper thick too. So um, I've been weary about grading it just because there's there's like an indention low spot on the back cover. Looks like somebody took a ballpoint pen and wrote something. But none of the other covers are affected, so I've always been weary of grading it. But I, I may actually pull a listing and, and send it in for grading and, and see what it does. Just because four covers, man. Like if the if the inside one's a nine eight, sweet, I get a nine eight. I also got this too today. Well, so like, I grabbed a couple of graded. Oh. Let me go grab Ooh, one. There you go. Oh. Yeah, you you're showing this off in the in the hangout. So yeah. so that's a that's a last Ronin nine point nine? Not no. Whew. Nine nine peach Mavoko too on top of that. I'm right? trying to I'm trying to I'm trying to get Jonathan to trade me for that to jump off of the truth. <laughs> I don't think he'll take a nine nine last Ronin just because we got plenty. So well, that, we're they, good on nine they, nine last Ronins. They, so they, they they usually grade high. Yeah, oh yeah. That that book was made really well. Okay. And, and as I long as it, as long as you don't have a bunch of greasy fingerprints on it, you're going to get a nine yeah. nine unless there's some other kind of you know stress mark on it that's going to knock it down. But yeah, I don't well, know how these magazine slabs are because they look sloppy and the, the, the sticker on it is it looks weird. Dude, like, square bound square bound books have more nine nines than you, than you think. Yeah, yeah, we did our our submission that has come back. It was a twenty five. It was a full submission. We ended up with uh, six six nine nines. Tens. Everything else is nine eights, but yeah, we ended up with six of them, and then we've did still you get, got did, tons you get out. All, you got all back yet, or just a, no? Some? We just got our first one back. It's been weird. We've had a weird thing going on with them. So all of our signature series stuff hit uh, CGC two days ago. No, a month and a month and ten days ago, and I think it just they just finally received received it. Yeah, <laughs> um, but it's been sitting there, and then we had uh, our submission to twenty five that came back, and then we sent another eighteen that was mostly like one in tens and one in twenty fives, uh, and those are still they're not even uh, they're not even scheduled for grading yet, but they've been received almost as long as these ones that we got back. So it's just it's weird over there. I think it's a magazine. So I don't think they were planning on getting though, that many magazine size submissions all at once. But when Ronin came out, everybody sent theirs in immediately. So I think they're going to raise their prices. I have a theory that they didn't have enough cases built. That's my that's my standing theory right now. They did not have enough magazine cases built. I, I believe because this is like some Home Depot shit. <laughs> <laughs> they're not impressive. The the magazine cases are not impressive. Dude, I, I'm worried, like, even getting them packaged up, I was so worried I was going to damage them just because there's, like, they're so big, and the only support's on the outer edge. It's almost yeah. like they almost need to put, like, a little plastic bar that comes in, like, half an inch on each side to just give it a little more support or something. They just feel, I don't know, they, they feel a little uh, flimsy. So, yeah, I mean, it's kind of sad to say that, but that's, they just don't, the mag- those magazine-sized slabs, they just don't feel right. Uh, I am going to be grading that Source magazine. I got, I got I, the one came in for Canada. Very, very, very good copy. Amazing, man. Nice. And if 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 they label it too, that's that's. So if you guys didn't know what Mel's talking about, he talked about it on Drunken Chat last night. He found the first appearance of the Boondocks. Oh wow! In a, ma- in a major publication, and so- found source, it w- source in color. Na- in color, Source, nineteen ninety eight. Sharks and ate that shit up. Ain't no money. Yeah, yeah. They, they, yeah the, the live what stream. Was, we're we're giving this out, and these these guys have eBay fired up, ready. What was it like? There was two more listings, like while you were airing. They, yeah, I, there, I, there were two. I, there were two. I've got it right now. I, <laughs> I, 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 so, I looked it up like this morning. Gone. So it's a, it's a, it's Silk the Shock and DMX and um, I forgot what the other one was. But if you see it, that's 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 the book. First, first boondocks in color. First, publicly 
probably big production because it, right. it was in a, it, it was the college paper that was where we Maryland University. And yep. No physical copies exist. No known physical copies exist. Only on microfilm from the school library. All right. Does anyone else have anything else to show off? Uh, Jonathan, it uh, looks like you have. Yeah, I went and grabbed a few slabs that I got recently. Um, this one, I've always loved this book. I don't yes. know if you guys ever jumped in on that. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. But, but earlier I picked up, like when this book was out, I grabbed every cover. I mm-hmm. had the, the San Diego Comic-Con cover in a 9.8 and a 9.8 SS. I ended up, I got pissed at Black Mask because uh, they were like, Oh, here's issue one, but you don't get issue two for seven freaking months. <laughs> so I, I sold off all my black mask, but I got this for like, I don't know, probably 45 bucks, I'd say 50 bucks. Wow. And so I thought I'd grab that because if this if this actually does get become a show. Yeah, the connecting the, covers, right? the connecting later prints. Yeah. yeah. If this does become a show, it's going to be freaking awesome because this book is rad is so absolutely rad. Just, um, that was it was a really good read and that was the oh. thing that pissed off a lot of us was was what's taken so long for the next issue man <laughs> like well, and you and lose then, readership that way well and rosenberg, the ball. rosenberg talked about doing a volume two for the last what three years or something like i don't think that's well, happening well, anymore but no, black, black um, rob liefeld Rob this Liefeld thing. and Kirkman talked about doing Infinite too, but that never happened. <laughs> yeah, well, I, remember, I remember standing a lot of NYCC for the um for the NYCC variant. That was a nightmare. I felt so sorry for Rosenberg. <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> yeah. just like it was. It was just meta confusion. Yeah, like, some, all those all those punk rock hom- homages were rad. Those were just cool. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I you know they they put this up on uh, this got options. This is the ash can. So I jumped on um, as soon as I got the notification it was optioned. I jumped on uh, on Scout's website and snagged that and like uh, fifteen copies of the Ashcan Raw for I mean nothing for for nothing pretty much. Um, I don't know necessarily know anything about that book, but you know it could be a film, I guess, right? Um, and then I grabbed this um, Department of Truth number one second print. And nine nice. eight for I think I got it for like eighty dollars shipped or something like that. I was like, I mean, I, I think picking up the uh, I've been jumping on second and third printings of stuff a lot lately because a lot of people start paying attention to them. Like like I showed before, like Canto the Canto second and third printings. Like yeah, people are starting to jack up the price on those a little bit. But if you go on AV, eBay, you can still find them for cover a little bit more than cover, which, you know, there's a lot less copies. A lot of people are into that, like, oh, it's a lower print run, you know? And oh, yeah, like, definitely. Plus, the, the Canto, for instance, was, like, their new covers, too, which is which is really awesome. Um, uh, the Department of Truth, some people aren't so keen on them yet because they're just recolored. You know, in the blue instead of all the red and black, but I I doubt I'm gonna lose money on those, so I'm totally fine with it. You know? I hope you ordered the fourth print of number one and the third print of two and three and the second print of five, six, and uh, and then eight. issue seven. <laughs> and then issue seven when it when it does you know come out, it's gonna have a second print eventually too. And and this is the thing that's the, this is how you know the book is good. Ninety five thousand estimated orders for the first print, right? Including all the store variants and stuff, which I can understand. There was a ton of stores that took advantage of this opportunity to get an exclusive. And if I had a store in the in the loot, I would have done it too. Because <laughs> the book is that good. So going back and selling multiple prints is because the beat has built so much that it's hitting people who are like, okay, maybe I passed it up, maybe I shouldn't have passed this book up. Let me go back and read it. Now they're looking for copies to read. And if you the, the Department of Truth trade paperbacks even are scarce for the first five issues. There was even a store variant for the for the for, uh, first trade, I believe, that was a phenomenal looking variant to it. So there's a ton of spec there as far as that goes in Department of Truth. But it 
you know, it got picked up by, you know, a major powerhouse of monetary influx um, in, in, you know, the, the entertainment industry and the Murdoch family. So I, I have high hopes that a super good high production series will come out of that story. And if it does, I mean, is it the next Walking Dead? No, mm-hmm. because it's got a hundred times the print run. <laughs> so well, well, you funny you say Brent, that. I talked, to my, Cole. <laughs> <laughs> I, I talked to my store owner. He was saying there's returnability for Department of Truth issue one. Yeah, but they it, just because there was returnability doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean they got returned. Well, that's true. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> yeah. if the book sells out and it's good, like uh, like DC Future State, also the first prints of all the Future State books were all returnable. The second prints were not. Mm-hmm. So and and yeah it took like three or four stores before i finally came across a third print for department of truth number one because people went pretty ham on the second prints so what uh you were saying uh jonathan about the later prints i don't think it's a lose in any of those situations because no. you're as a store as a retailer you're gonna you're if you're not gonna sell through you're at least gonna make your money back if you're if you're if you're you know having your people do the subscriptions right and you're having your people talk to you know your customers and say hey what are you into what are you reading you know do you, do you want some suggestions and of course staff picks and stuff like that being held in, in places that people see when they're coming through really gets them to want to pick up books that may be out of their normal collecting box does anybody else find it ironic though that uh department of truth just just who picked it up who got the option rights to it it being the, the the Murdoch clan, as it were. <laughs> <laughs> Just out of the, the pure basis that a book is about conspiracy theories. So. Well, you, you, you know what, though? It's, it, it's, it's better than the one that is more chicken noodle news, if you know what I'm saying, <laughs> if we're in the grand scheme of things. <laughs> So, uh, but I, I'm I'm definitely interested to see you know what happens with this property. If and it, and and look, the writing is one thing, and we all know that a lot of times creative uh, influence usually takes over the original written kind of message. So I hope they don't ruin it that way by by wanting to do very you know different sided things to the story that's already established. It's it, it's like. It's like looking at the Brian Springer X Men, uh, Brian Singer X Men, and then uh, seeing you know what Stan Lee had envisioned and being like, these things are not the same. <laughs> and, uh, we we do not want that to happen. All right. Well, I want to just uh, take this time to thank James and Jonathan for joining us for our uh, modern modern playbook roundtable. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah. So. Thanks for through. Yep. Thank you for everyone watching. Uh, ca- catch us next week. Peace. Later.